Good evening and welcome to an end of the week recap here for SPY and trade plan for next week. Um, quite a few trades here this week. Most of them scalps, one nice little swing. I'll get to momentarily. Monday, tried to catch a bottom here. Uh, the initial trigger here at any 275 calls here at 101, stopped me out here at 92. A um, little while afterwards had a secondary trigger, a very nice follow through, got in these 275 calls here at 70 was expecting a higher low, went ahead and added in to them. Sold some here at a dollar, sold some here at 110, and the rest trailed me out at 78. A good little trade there, could have held a little bit longer into the end of the day, but it is what it is, and uh, moved on. Tuesday, had a gap up, <clears throat> tried to use my gap and go strategy. The initial entry here at 175, and these 285 calls here did fail quickly. Um, had a secondary opportunity to go ahead and buy in here uh, as it held this prior low. I uh, got in these 285 calls again here at 118. Excuse me, sold those out here at 126 because it looked like that at that moment. So it uh, looked like it was going to fail and roll over and create one of these H's. And at least test here, I could have bought back in lower. Um, that did not occur. And of course, in hindsight, it should have held. So it is what it is. And on to Wednesday on this gap down, which is my favorite trade to take. This is my A plus trade uh, when I do wait for the actual trigger to occur. So my initial entry here, I bought these 98 calls here, excuse me, 280 calls here at 98, uh, added at 96, and once it failed, I dumped them immediately for about a 40% loss here. Um, being an A-plus trade, this is the trade that I take with the largest size, and uh, well, without waiting for the official trigger, without being disciplined, uh, that one cost me more than I really should have been putting at risk. Anyways, as a result, uh, I took a revenge trade here in these 280 calls, again, at 65, and was smarter, and I dumped those out uh, quickly as it failed at 57. So, um, just uh, my mind wasn't right, and I uh, have to learn from it and move on and, and continue to <laughs> progress and learn from that mistake and really wait for that trigger to occur. Um, later in the day, I saw this base started to set up here, I also noted on uh, on futures <clears throat> we're starting to hold that 275 i said there was a buyer that at two, uh, 2755 2752 something like that um that really started to to take out the offers and lifted pretty easily so anyways um caught a little trade here in these 280 calls here at 196 sold out on this initial pop here at 221 the rest of them stopped me out because i didn't want it to go all the way against me and uh yeah missed out on the rest of that move then on to thursday it was still holding this 275 level, 2755 on futures. So I started a swing position here, considering we were just above the 8 EMA. I thought maybe uh, we weren't going to go ahead and test it. Uh, a true strength, true momentum trades don't uh, don't always have to touch the 8 EMA. So I was willing to go ahead and start small, add in as it confirmed, and it's exactly what I got. So I started these 300 calls here at 270. <clears throat> added on this initial spike here at 260. Added on the way up at 271. And I added once it started to break above a little bit of a range here at 280. Going into the end of the day, we knew, the market knew that Trump was going to have his speech about um, reopening the economy. The medical staff uh, on hand had approved the guidelines and all that stuff. So it was all good news that was coming out, supposedly. So the question was whether or not the market was going to see it as good or not. And understandably, this could have been a... Uh, binary event could have gone either way. However, because the news started coming out here around, I believe it was like 320, 330, somewhere around in here, and it started to bid up, I took that as the market liking what it was hearing. And of course, somebody always knows by the time news comes out to the public. So considering it did not sell off, uh, I took that as a, a cue to go ahead and hold it overnight, paid off nicely. Uh, nice move up here to the 50 SMA. I did reduce some here at 457. Reduce some more here at 4.15 when it started to break down below the opening range. At the end of the day, it looked like a blow-off type of move, so I went ahead and I took some more off here at 4.68. I'm holding a small position, small remaining position uh, of those calls simply because it's essentially a free runner. Uh, if it continues higher, great. If it goes back and these calls go to zero, uh, I essentially break even on it. So uh, maybe put in some work for nothing, but it's the, the smart way to play it, in my opinion, from this from this point forward. Still holding my shares from down here at 246 and a half. Still holding the mid-2021 350 calls and December 2021 400 calls. So with all that said, I'm going forward into what I'm looking for next week. Really just trying to stay patient, stay disciplined. If I do see some of my uh, my trade strategies 
set up off of the open, I will continue to take those. Um, but if we get a pullback, I'm looking to buy between these two levels, 270 and a half, 276 and a half. I'm not going to accumulate like I did here. I uh, simply want to buy in versus a level. If that level fails, I'll get out and I'll buy in versus another level. If that level fails, I'll get out. because I, I want to I want to be able to basically time the bottom, uh, which is kind of hard to do, um, but I will give it a little bit of wiggle room. I'm not going to sit here and accumulate simply because if it does come down to here, there's a chance that it breaks this uh, this overall trend, uh, which does look something like this on the daily chart. If it breaks this trend, uh, who knows how far it's really going to come down to? Maybe this 271 and a half, maybe even down here to 264 and a half. Um, there's really no telling. So uh, ideally, maybe it comes down here, it dips below it, and then on a pop back above, what I'll call a dip and rip, uh, I will buy that reclaim of that trend line. I do still have this anchored VWAP down here, which is where I will throw the most um, the most weight behind the trade if it does come back down here and test it. Now it may test it next week, it may test it in a month. Who knows, uh, but I'm gonna leave this level on here for the time being until it is proven to be worthless. So. With all that said, still bullish on the overall, overall market. And as I've said numerous times, I believe this coronavirus stuff is going to disappear <clears throat> and things are going to get back on track if they have not already, simply because the market is a forward looking uh, machine and everything that we see in the media as a, from a public perspective is already being priced in. There are people with far more information than you or I. There's far more people, there's people with far more uh, with the financial backing to go ahead and run these models and to, uh, to get the information that they need to have in order to put their millions to use. Whereas we may be putting thousands to use. So, um, with that said, uh, looking at this as a situation where things are going to blow over and just above price action, where it's only going to be technical levels from here. <clears throat> I don't see any fear coming into the market. There's no real strong quote unquote reason to sell, um, at least not heavily going forward. So anyways, here on the futures, um, I noticed that price action was holding this level here on Friday. Now, when I was looking at this on the intraday time frame, it took me a little while to realize <clears throat> on the daily time frame, it was actually a bull flag that was breaking out. So hopefully that holds holds up on Monday and Tuesday and into next week and continues because this is a potential um, shooting star kind of pattern, uh, evening star, excuse me, uh, where it gaps up, shows an ind indecision candle and just kind of opens exactly, or excuse me, closes exactly where it opens. Now this being an indecision bar is exactly where you would think it would be or where I would think it should be right at the 50 SMA, right at this prior breakdown level around two, what was it 28.90 to 28.80 ish. We'll just call it this range right in here. Um, very logical level to have a, a real battleground. So uh, elevated volume, which I see some participants saying price is going up while volume is declining. What the hell do you think happened all back here? I mean, price action continues up with that with volume declining. That's, that's, that's an uptrend. Um, there's no fear. There's no battle. There's, I mean, it is what it is. So that's not the way to gauge whether or not price action is diverging from, from volume. That's not, <laughs> it doesn't work that way. So anyways, um, onto my internals, what I'm taking a look at here, first of all, technology, which is the largest weighting in the S and P 500, um, not quite at all time highs yet, but if we do break above, I'd say two, well, these two lines and then above 220, there's no reason to believe we don't fill this gap and possibly push up to all time highs. Now, of course, it's going to take Apple and Microsoft and Amazon and all these other tech, tech names to, to continue uh, being bought, uh, which I do believe they will with the coronavirus and the impact and people working from home and you're going to have to buy new computers, webcams, headphones, headsets, uh, all that good stuff that, you know, technology. And plus we're having, you know, the revolution of autonomous vehicles and all that good stuff. Technology and chips and things are going to continue to, uh, to grow. Uh, so with that said, technology does look strong, although technically there is a potential here for a hanging man, which just is this red hammer, slightly elevated volume. Maybe we get a sell off. Um, actually, let me zoom back in here real quick because there are a couple of other times in recent history where this kind of candle has occurred. We have one, where were they? There's one here where it only pulled back to here. You have this one where it only pulled back to here. You have, uh, this, it happens frequently. I mean, you have this one right out of prior resistance where it literally came back for a day and then continued to rally higher. So while I say it's a potential bearish reversal, it's also a potential area just for consolidation. So if that does occur, I wouldn't expect it to come back down much further than this 204 level. And even if it does anchor VWAP again, uh, just like I have on a lot of other charts here, 
should hold around 193 ish over onto financials uh, xlf bounced exactly where it should have or where it needed to uh, this last week took that opportunity to go ahead and buy some bank of america city group jp morgan uh, pretty much any bank you name it. i took a little bit of a portion of it and also added to my 2022 xlf calls so just going to go over a few individual names as you've seen bank of america was a beautiful beautiful bounce here off of that low i uh, got myself and the trade crew guys in some and some uh, some calls out here for november um, jp morgan was an awesome bounce as well we started buying that um, actually on this day so still a little underwater on my jp morgan calls but we'll see what happens with that going forward um, goldman sachs was already up so it wasn't really anything to do there morgan stanley actually bounced very nicely didn't quite come all the way to the anchored vwap um, so yeah i mean banks are pretty much all showing at least some stabilization maybe he's putting in a, a base and if xlf can break above this 24 level just like the other banks have this similar pattern that's going to break this what looks like a bear flag a bear wedge uh, to the upside which is going to compound the buying because they're going to, have to buy a close xlf could easily reach up to this 25 level possibly even 26 uh, if that does occur pretty quickly on uh, to transports over here transports a little bit different simply because the airlines the airlines uh, news came out last weekend that they're going to get their bailouts um, they didn't really respond bullishly a lot of them were still printing on lows and uh, not really helping the transports and if you're a follower of Dow theory like I am uh, that doesn't really bode well for the overall market because transports do have a significant impact as far as being able to ship goods if 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 transports are underperforming then the robots and participants may interpret that as um, all transportations or all transports are not performing well because there's not a demand so we'll see what happens with that going forward but uh, I think the airlines long term are going to be either consolidated or some of them just going to simply shut down uh, take over whatever the case is um, and that will ultimately in the long run be good for the industry but uh, right now it's uh, it's kind of a, a way uh, a drag on the the transportation index so on to my individual names that I like to watch. Amazon here, um, potential blow off here on Thursday, a um, little bit of a rebound here on to Friday. What I think is actually happening is maybe it's just doing, we'll draw my trend, there we go, somewhat of a flag. Maybe it's going to do something like this before it starts to continue higher. And if that occurs, it's going to have a huge measured move from 20 and a half to 24 and a half, so about a 400 point move looking at 2,700 to 3,000 uh, as a technical target here in the near future. Earnings are this week, I believe. So that could be the catalyst that actually pushes it up there. Oh, it's 4.30, so next week. Um, but anyways, earnings are a catalyst that could come out in the very near future. If it does continue to rally and, and then earnings come out, that's possibly gonna be a sell the news type of scenario, uh, but it is going to be on watch here coming up into next week. Apple, I've already gone over my previous video, but, um, <clears throat> with a blank chart with no levels on it, no moving averages, I'd say over 288, 289 should easily reach up to 300, 301 ish area and possibly even up to fill this gap. I mean, Apple, Tim Cook came out the other day and said that they've actually performed better than they had expected uh, during this coronavirus crisis. So that's possibly going to be good. We'll see what happens with earnings comes out also on the 30th. Now onto Microsoft here, just a couple of lines. Uh, I'm sure the bears out there have already drawn, uh, have already drawn uh, this trend line here. If it breaks that, there's not really much else to battle against. So above there, uh, I sincerely believe we'll probably get back to all-time highs fairly easily. So uh, Microsoft was performing very well prior to this coronavirus shutdown and will probably continue to do so, especially as I've said, with the work from home economy that's going on now. So uh, with all that said, those are my thoughts on the overall market trade plan I'm looking for next week. We'll see what happens. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them down below. Have a good weekend and good luck on my